Hey everyone and welcome to another boss battle as part of this boss week where every day we're going to be going over and looking at the mechanics of a different boss that you can come up against in Warframe. Today we're going to be taking a look at honestly one of my most disliked bosses in the game and that is Vey Heck. Vey Heck is one of the bosses that has undergone a very large rework in fact several over the years to get to the state where he is in now as the boss of Earth holding the Oro node. He's a fanatic that is so loyal to the Grenier, he's led a whole bunch of attacks against not only the Corpus, wiping out several Corpus fleets, but directly against the Tenno with his Fomorian fleet having wiped out several Corpus, like say, several Corpus fleets, plus several Tenno relays, resulting in the loss of many, many lives. He's also tried poisoning the entire Earth due to, during the uh, Cicero crisis, and that resulted in the antitoxins that we currently have as Tenno, as well as having created the Gustrag III, by ordering Dr. Tengus to recondition them while they were in prison. So as you can imagine, he's one of the top people on the Lotus's naughty list. So we've got to go and take him out. As a result of taking down Heck, you'll gain parts for the Hydroid Warframe, plus certain mods that you see on the left hand side of your screen right now. However, much like Jackal that we looked at yesterday, he doesn't really drop anything desirable in terms of mods. The boss itself has a whole bunch of stages to it. Although four of the five stages are exactly the same, Three of those four can actually be skipped entirely because they aren't actually useful to the final fight at all. When you're on the run to the boss, like actually going to the boss room, he will actually spawn three times on your path. But you can simply guess the exit to the room that he's in and just continue towards the final arena, skipping that part of the fight entirely. Once you get to that final room though, you now have two final stages to deal with. The first of those two stages is actually the same as the three stages that you can actually skip. He has three main attacks that he's going to do during these stages. First is the twin guns. He will fire at you throughout and that deals honestly fairly low damage. It's actually pretty accurate but the damage is low. Even at sortie level they're not much of a threat. The second is a disruption beam. It's almost entirely impossible to avoid. He will hit you and drain you of all of your energy much like an ancient disruptor. It can be very annoying especially if you're using your energy to help take down the boss or even just to survive. He can also do that attack on a friendly unit to him and that will cause him to regenerate some health back so you really need to stop him doing that as soon as you physically can. He will also summon units to fight for him during the fight including butchers, lancers and hellions. Just look out for them. All the while he's doing this he will be completely invulnerable until you notice his mask on his face drops down and the top of his back starts flashing. While his mask is down, he will be buffing all the units around him, but he is now vulnerable to attack. You can only do a certain amount of damage to him while he is vulnerable, so you might have to do it quite a few times before he goes into his final stage. During that final stage, he will now stop flying around and go into his terror frame. His attacks change and become quite a bit stronger. Rather than a machine gun, he now gains a cannon, which fires traitor missiles at you, dealing a large amount of blast damage. So trying to avoid that is very, very important. In addition to that single tracking missile, he can also fire a barrage of missiles at once. While they're not homing, they do do a ton of damage, so you really need to get out of there while they're in flight. He will also launch drones that have two different effects. The propaganda drone boosts the damage of both the units in the area, but also of Heck himself. So you really need to take those down as soon as you physically can. The second is an orbital strike drone that's going to drop missiles after locking onto a Tenno. That also deals a ton of damage. So like the propaganda drone, you need to take that down as soon as you physically can as well. If you get too close to him, he's going to knock you down. If you get too far away, he's going to charge you. So just be careful about positioning in relation to the boss. Don't get too far away, don't get too close. And you should be just fine in terms of that. While he's doing all of these attacks though, he's completely vulnerable now. There is no invulnerability here. Make sure you are just firing, burning him down as quickly as you can while dealing with everything else that's going on. For our elemental damage here though, he is all about his ferrite armor, meaning we're going to be modding pure corrosive here to take them down as quickly as possible. With either heat or cold as our spare elemental, because neither of them have a downside against the uh, against that armor. The corrosive works both on Heck himself while he's flying, but also while he's in his terror frame as well. So you don't even have to worry about two mods with separate builds. One build fits all for this one, making it very easy to deal with from a modding point of view. 
Now I'm not going to talk about much about strats to take him down quickly, mainly because there aren't that many because of the frankly rather frustrating invulnerability phases. There are two things I'm going to mention to help you deal with the sortie hack a bit easier. To maximise your time shooting at his vulnerable parts, especially in the sortie where the health is higher, a rhino stomp or a frost avalanche can freeze him with the mask down, allowing you to deal as much damage as quickly as you can and not miss out on potential damage that you could be dealing to him. I believe that heck is one of those where the abilities get less and less effective the more you use them, so be prepared for the duration of the stun to get less and less each time, but even then, it's still super useful to take him down. So that's pretty much it for the Vehek fight. I hope this video has helped you understand the fight more and how to take him down easier, plus his mechanics so you can avoid his attacks. I look forward to seeing your comments below as ways though, I shall see you in the next video.